let's say you're given a real number r that is strictly less than one in absolute value and greater than zero. Then this sum right over here actually converges to one over one minus r as an infinite geometric series with ratio r. What if we pad this with a cosine of k times an angle beside the r to the k? What happens to this sum? That's the question we're going to investigate today. We're going to actually get an explicit formula for what this is. If you want to try this on your own, here are a few ideas that will help along the way. First of all, there's this theorem that allows you to relate e to the i theta to cosines and sines, writing it as a complex number, cosine theta plus i sine theta. By doing this for e to the negative i theta, you can actually write cosine theta as this complex number right over here, and that might be useful in the process. And finally, a recognition that if you raise this number to the k, it is actually the complex number cosine k theta plus i sine k theta, and that's called the Moivre's theorem. So if you want to play around with these ideas, that might help in this process. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now, you notice here that we have this e to the i k theta being this sum right over here. So we can kind of think of padding this with a term that looks like the sum k equals zero to infinity r to the k sine k theta with an i in front. And the reason to do that is if we collect this all together, we'll get the sum k equals zero to infinity of r to the k times cosine k theta plus i sine k theta, which is e to the i k theta. And we can represent this in a simpler form as a sum k equals zero to infinity of r e to the i theta to the k. And now we have a geometric series whose common ratio is r e to the i theta, so it's a complex thing. Using similar properties that we have with real numbers, this can be represented in a shorter form as one minus one over one minus the common ratio, which is r e to the i theta. So this is an honest to goodness complex number. And from the way we started out, its real part is the thing that we're actually interested in, and its imaginary part is some other superfluous thing. So another way to word the thing that we're actually interested in finding is that it's the real part of this number right over here. So that's the thing we should investigate. What is the real part of this? As soon as we have the real part of this, we get exactly the answer to the sum that we're interested in. So we're gonna clear this and let's play around with this to figure out what this real part is. So this is a notation usually used for the real part of a complex number. Now the unfortunate part of the way we have this number written is we have the complex part of it in the denominator. So what we can do is clear that by multiplying by its complex conjugate. Okay, so that's the complex conjugate of the entire number in the denominator which is one minus the complex conjugate of this thing, and that's r e to the negative i theta. So we'll have one minus r e to the negative i theta in the denominator, and we need that in the numerator as well. So multiplying these, we get one minus r e to the negative i theta, and in the denominator, we have one minus r times e to the i theta, plus e to the negative i theta, because we have two negative r's here, and then plus r squared times e to the i theta times e to the negative i theta, but that's one. All right, this quantity here looks familiar. It looks very close to this with the factor of two missing. So this thing actually is twice cos theta. All right, so it makes sense that our denominator now is a real number because we took a number that's complex and multiplied by its complex conjugate. Now the question is what's going on with the numerator? Well, the numerator we can express now using this formula right over here. This is one minus r times the quantity cosine of negative theta plus i sine of negative theta. And the thing we're interested in here is the real part of that number. The real part of that number is everything that evades the imaginary part. So is this part right over here. Now since cosine of negative theta is cosine of theta, that leaves us with a numerator of one minus r cosine theta and a denominator of what we had before, 
1 minus 2 cos theta plus r squared. And so here is the nice final form for this entire sum right here, written explicitly as a real number in terms of r and theta. It has a really nice form if you take a look at it. It depends solely on r and theta and doesn't write itself in some weird and strange way. So you can play around with some computations. I actually did when I was playing around to see if the formula I ended up with was actually correct. I took values of r and theta, played around, looking at the sum from k equals 0 to like 100, and then writing this down and seeing that if they actually work out to be the same thing, and they do. So a cool little video on how changing a sum by just a little factor can be approached by passing from the real numbers to the complex numbers to get a sense of what's going on. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.